Let us rejoice and be glad and give glory to God. For the Lord our God, the Almighty, reigns. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you. And with your spirit. This morning as we celebrate the Feast of St. Anselm, the Church invites us once again to acknowledge our sins and to ask for the mercy of our loving God. Lord Jesus, you reveal the fullness of the Father's eternal love for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you demand that your disciples be known by their love for one another. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. And Lord Jesus, you plead for us always at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. <clears throat> o God, who led the bishop St. Anselm, to seek out and to teach the depths of your wisdom. Grant, we pray, that our faith in you may so aid our understanding that what we believe by your command may give delight to our hearts. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles, and they were distributed to each according to need. Thus Joseph also named by the apostles Barnabas, which is translated son of encouragement, a Levite by birth, sold a piece of property that he owned, then brought the money and put it at the feet of the apostles. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> The Lord is king, he is robed in majesty. The Lord, the Lord is king, he is robed in majesty. The Lord is king in splendor robe, robed is, robed is the Lord and girt about with strength. The Lord is king, he is robed in majesty. And he has made the world firm not to be moved. Your throne stands firm from of old from everlasting you are, O Lord. The Lord is king, he is robed in majesty. Your decrees are worthy of trust indeed. Holiness befits your house, O Lord, for length of days. 
The Lord is king. He is robed in majesty. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Son of Man must be lifted up so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. My brothers and sisters, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to Nicodemus, You must be born from above. The wind blows where it wills, and you can hear the sound it makes, but you will not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said to him, How can this happen? Jesus answered and said to him, You are the teacher of Israel, and you do not understand this? Amen, amen, I say to you, we speak of what we know, and we testify to what we have seen, but you people do not accept our testimony. If I tell you about earthly things, and you do not believe, how will you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has gone up to heaven except the one who has come down from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In March of 2013, there appeared on the world stage an unknown figure from Latin America. Jorge Bergoglio emerged as Pope Francis after Bishop uh, Pope uh, Benedict had resigned. He replaced him, and initially his persona was a mystery to many. People wanted to know more about him and various images began to emerge. And the one that stuck out in my mind at that time was an image of Pope Francis in Argentina, riding on a subway on his way to the chancery. He is engaged in a deep conversation with an individual. Despite the fact he's surrounded by numerous people Francis is intensely focused on the person he is talking with on that crowded subway. He's listening, listening with the ear of his heart to the need of that particular individual. I thought of that image again this morning as I read the line from the Acts of the Apostles. There was no needy person among them. In that early Christian community that we get an inside look at today in our reading from the Acts, there was no needy person because everyone was listening to each other, listening with the ear of their heart and responding to the human need that they discovered by their listening. In fact, we get a glimpse of one individual, perhaps the first person in the Acts of the Apostles who receives a nickname. Joseph is his real name, 
but the disciples nickname him, if you will, Barnabas. And maybe there's a great significance in this nickname. We're told in the reading that the name Barnabas translates son of encouragement or son of consolation. Perhaps the apostles were taken with Barnabas precisely because they saw how well he listened. And when he listened well, he offered a kind word, a word of encouragement, a word that would bring consolation to someone in need. What might you and I be called during these times to do in order for those among us who have needs. I read last night online that there is a resurgence of interest in faith among young people, but that also during these times, young people are feeling very, very lonely. Perhaps that's the grace we're called to give to others during these days, to reach out so that we can listen to others and alleviate their, lonely, their loneliness. Today's reading from the Acts of the Apostles gives us an inside look at what life was like in the early church. As we continue our reading of the Acts of the Apostles, we are going to see how that little small community of believers began to grow. It, grow. it grew because people saw how those Christians loved one another. When they saw that community of love, they wanted to become part of it. Christians who listen with the ear of their hearts and respond with generosity to the needs of others are the cause for the church's growth. The risen Lord continues to be proclaimed whenever we listen and respond generously to the needs of others. Let us pray that there will be no needy person among us. In thanksgiving for life and the risen Lord, we now offer to God our needs and our petitions. That Christians may never fail to announce God's great love for the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That church leaders may invite all people into relationship with God in Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the world may embrace the eternal life God freely offers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
that leaders of government and business alike may allow heavenly wisdom to guide earthly things, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That on this feast of St. Anselm, we pray for all Benedictine communities throughout the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick may behold the healing offered in Jesus, and the needy may find in us compassionate friends, we pray to the Lord. And let us pray for the dead. May they find welcome among those who share the life promised by the Son of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And now in silence we place our personal needs before God. For all of these, let us pray to the Lord. O God, whose only begotten Son bore the weight of human suffering for our salvation, hear the prayers of your church for our sick brothers and sisters, and deliver us from this time of trial. Open our ears and our hearts to the voice of your Son. Be not afraid, for I am with you always. Bless all doctors and nurses, researchers and public servants. Give us the wisdom to do what is right and the faith to endure this hour that we might gather once again to praise your name in the heart of your church, delivered from all distress and confident in your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth is given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. <clears throat> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, the fruit of the vine and the work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Pray now, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always delight in these paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father of mercies, ever faithful God. For you have given us Jesus, your only Son, as our Redeemer and Lord. He always showed compassion for children and for the poor, for the sick and for sinners, and he became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our Father and that you care for all your sons and daughters. And so this morning, with all the angels and saints, we exalt and bless your name and sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> you are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst, 
when we are gathered together by his love, and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most holy, we ask you to send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and gave you thanks. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the Spirit, the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Robert, our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of others. Inspire us with words and deeds to comfort those who labor and find life burdensome. Make our service of others true, a true, truly the, after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to justice and peace, that all people may be lifted up by the hope of a world made new. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of Christ and all the dead whose faith is known alone to you. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. And grant also to us that when our earthly pilgrimage is done, we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever, there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and Holy Martyrs, with Saint Anselm, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
At the Savior's command and now formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with all of you. And with your spirit. Lamb of God. You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, through your death, grant life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free me from all of my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful to your teaching and never let me depart from you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are they who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. The Christ had to suffer and rise from the dead, and so enter into his glory. Alleluia. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
and let us pray. Hear, O Lord, our prayers, that this most holy exchange by which you have redeemed us may bring your help in this present life and assure us eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass has ended now. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.